How are we all? Welcome back to a little daily vlog. I'm really excited about this one because I feel like it's just going to be a really chill day in London and these are like my favourite vlogs to film. So how are we all? Let me know how you're doing. Uh, I I feel really good today. Yesterday we went to Ascot, which you guys will have seen before this. Had like the best time, like genuinely had the best time. But today it feels a lot more calm. <laughs> I think we're a bit sun frazzled. Uh, after being out all day, I've just made myself a little, I say squash, but I used to say juice, like a diluted juice because it's quite hot to do. Ah, but yeah, how are we all doing? I'd love to ask you guys, let me know how you're doing in the comments. Have you got any summer plans? Are you going away on a holiday? What's the weather like where you are? Let me know how you're doing down below. I love a little read of your comments and a catch up. Um, so as you can tell by the title, we are going to be heading into London. I thought this would be a really fun video um, to take you around some of my favourite bookshops in London. So some of them you will have already seen, I'm sure, but some might be new. And if you are planning a trip to London, I thought this could be really nice for you to visit them in person. I know some people read books um, like digitally on like a tablet or uh, Kindle or whatever, however, I really love a physical book and I don't think that will ever change I just love like the physicality of holding a book So I thought it could be really nice and these bookstores are lovely It's a really cool place to sit to read to grab a coffee and just get lost in the world of literature So that's the plan. I also have a couple of things to grab in town um, I need to buy some shoes for Wimbledon because I'm going to Wimbledon this year I'm actually doing some presenting for a job there. So um, I need to try and scramble together some kind of suit uh, but I don't really have any summer appropriate smart shoes that I feel like will go with what I'm imagining to wear so that's the thing so yeah we're gonna we're gonna have a lovely day in town maybe grab some lunch uh, it's just lovely also you might notice it's a bit quiet around here there's no Maggie running in and um, she's actually gone home to Devon with Zara today's a Thursday when I'm filming this so Zara's taken some annual leave uh, she's just been super like busy with work so she put some annual leave in to drive home, she's taken Maggie, uh, so they're going to have a super nice time at home. My mum's actually coming to London tomorrow because at the weekend we're seeing Pink in Hyde Park. So it's a lot, like a lot is going on. It's a really busy week. So uh, yeah, I'm just really enjoying having a bit of a chill. So I thought we could have a little day together. Also, a massive thank you, as always, to Sky Cinema for sponsoring this month's YouTube video, as you know, and I have worked previously with Sky as part of the Sky Cinema Club. So once a month, I get to choose a film that is newly released to Sky Cinema. It might be an original Sky film, it might be a Hollywood blockbuster, and I get to watch it and share what I think with you guys. And I love it, I love it. It's so nice to have a little conversation with you all. So this month, I watched Paradise Highway. Now, oh my goodness. It's starring Morgan Freeman, the Morgan Freeman. So this is such, I instantly was like, yes, I love Morgan Freeman. His movies are brilliant. But let me tell you, this film will have like your palms, will be like clammy, it might get your heart racing a little bit. It is, it's a tough one. So I'll give you a little brief synopsis. So it's about a truck driver in America called Sally, who is played by the actress Juliette Binoche. I think she is an Oscar either Oscar winner or Oscar nominated. And um, essentially she is visiting her brother in prison. Now her brother asks her to do something which she has clearly done before. So she's clearly either smuggled some kind of like paraphernalia or something just while he's been in prison. And Julia agrees this one final time to do this task for him. However, she then goes to pick up this item that she's supposed to be transporting in her truck. This item turns out to be a young girl. Sally is basically told if she doesn't transport this young girl, which you wouldn't even want to think what she's going to be used for, but if she doesn't do that, her brother will die. So she's putting family first, even though it goes against everything of her conscience. Morgan Freeman comes in, who plays a retired detective who is paired with a very new detective, played by Cameron Mon Mogahan, I think that's his surname. Um, so they pair together to try and solve what is happening. And um, it will keep you gripped. It is such a good one, really intense. 
I loved it. Anything Morgan Freeman stars in, I mean, he has been in some absolute classics, Shawshank Redemption, Bruce Almighty, Now You See Me, to name but a few, some of my absolute favourites. He is such an incredible actor. Also a new release on Sky Cinema, which is a Sky original, is Simulant. Now, I know Ewan actually watched this, or at least I think he did, and um, it's all about AI, so artificial intelligence, um, which isn't really usually my film choice of that like, genre, but he really enjoyed it, so... I'm trusting his word. Also, Don't Worry Darling is coming to Sky Cinema this month. Now, it was such a good film. We watched it and absolutely loved it. It stars Florence Pugh, Harry Styles, Olivia Wilde, set in America. Again, a kind of like strange concept and you will watch it and think, what? We saw it in the cinema and absolutely loved it. So it's now being released on Sky Cinema this month, which is so cool. As you may have saw in a previous vlog, I was very kindly sent a sky glass for my bedroom and I am loving it, honestly. That TV, I get so many questions about how sky glass works and if you're in a flat or even if you aren't in a flat, you need no dish, you should just plug it into the wall. It's perfect, it has everything built in. So I've been watching some movies and some TV while I've been in bed and I've been loving it. And this month there's some amazing film pop-ups throughout the month of June and I was watching The Batman, so such a good film. Honestly, I love the Batman series, so, so gripping. I feel like I was obsessed with it as a kid. So those pop-ups regularly change throughout the months of new releases that come to Sky Cinema, so definitely keep an eye out for those. But as always, thank you so much to Sky Cinema for sponsoring Sky Cinema YouTube channel and trailers to all of the films mentioned will be linked down below. Right, so I need to go and try on a suit before I head into town so I know what kind of thing I'm gonna be working with. And um, yeah, I'm gonna pack up a bag and get ready to head into a very sunny London. I'm just trying on some suit options for Wimbledon and I have this wonderful suit. I love this so much. I've had this for a couple of years now. It's really lightweight, I've learned from last year that less is definitely more in um, hot temperatures when you're at any outdoor event. It was very hot last year, so um, yeah, this is the suit I'm going for, but I think it needs tailoring ever so slightly. Actually, Bulldog clipped the back <laughs> just to give it a little um, nip in, but I think we can even go a little bit more just to really define the, um, the body, but obviously it's a longer length as well, which I really like. Then there's a tailor super close to our flat and they do such a good job at a really reasonable price. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go for this, but the only thing I don't have are shoes. Everything I have is slightly too light. So when I head into town um, and have a little look around, I'm gonna see if I can get some like, nice suede brown monk strap shoes. That's the plan, that's the vibe I think we're gonna go for. But yeah, I think I've got my look for Wimbledon. So only need to buy shoes and I'm not gonna do a tie this year, I feel like a tie last year was slightly restricting around the neckline and I was rather hot, so I'm doing no tie and just keeping it nice, relaxed and casual. Okay, so I'm ready. I'm just about to hop on the train. I thought I'd show you today's outfit. It's very <laughs> different to yesterday's suit, but it's so much more lightweight. So the shirt is from Marks and Spencer with just like a little ribbed Uniqlo vest underneath. These linen trousers, I think I've had for like five years. They're from Mango. They're just so lightweight. And the trainers are from Russell and Bromley. I've just got a little tote bag with like my water bottle and a book to read on the train. Sunglasses. Let's go. So I just made it to Victoria and I've actually never eaten in here. Um, this is Victoria Mark Halls and it's literally directly opposite the station. This is what the station I get into London. It's like 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, I've never been in here but I'm really, really hungry and I feel like I can't continue the day without eating otherwise I'm probably gonna get a little bit of a headache. So um, yeah, let's head on in and see what kind of food options they've got. They've got a little terrace up top so it might be nice to sit out in the sun. Let's see. So I've just ordered at DF Tacos, one of my favorite taco restaurants, super, super nice, it's just here. And then we're gonna go up to the rooftop. It's so cool in here. Never been before, first time. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't realize the tacos were so big and they came in portions of two, so oops. And I ordered fries, again, huge, and a slaw. This is a very, very, very generous lunch. <laughs> I've made it to the first book area and we're in Holborn, um, a really, really short distance from like Central, so like Covent Garden. 
Um, and the first bookstore I'm actually going to is one that I've only been to once before, uh, but it's kind of like grown in popularity over the years. It's got a little coffee shop bar in it as well, so I think it'd be a really nice one to, um, to check out. So we're about five minutes away. I find Holborn such an interesting part of London because of the mix of old and new. You have buildings like this, slap bang in the middle of the city where you've got like glass infrastructure and skyscrapers. So yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. So we've arrived at the London Review bookshop. This is one of my favourite bookshops in London and it's just hooked off of the British Museum. So literally right behind me is the British Museum just there. Um, so really easy to get to if you are visiting one of the museums in um, London. You can obviously pop in here and they have a coffee shop as well so you can get a nice little drink and have a wander around the store. So I'm going to take you guys in and have a little browse. There aren't any books that I'm in die in need of, but then I say this every time and always leave with one, so let's have a look in. Now this bookshop certainly isn't the biggest in London, but it has a real character and quirky charm about it. The coffee shop attached is so lovely and the staff are all really friendly. It's definitely leaning more towards the academic style of literature, um, a lot of classics in here, a lot of travel, cultural studies, a lot of geographical books, a small section for fiction, so do bear that in mind, but um, a really nice place just to grab a little coffee and just to sit and chill, I think, with it being linked closely to the British Museum. They air slightly on that side of literature, but a really great bookshop nonetheless, and it's got such a lovely vibe. I've just stopped for a little wise coffee. They've got a nice little seat in the courtyard outside so you can sit, you can grab a book, you can bring a book, get a little drink and just fully lose yourself. I really, really love this bookstore. It's kind of like, I say they're not mainstream titles, a lot of it's quite curated. It's um, a lot of history, a lot of travel, a, um, like poetry, writing kind of thing. So definitely more on like the academic side of literature. Um, something to bear in mind, sure. But really lovely coffee, so I'm gonna sit and drink this and continue with my book. So I've just read some more of my book. So I'm now heading to the next bookstore, which I have featured quite a lot on the vlog before. We're going to be heading to Dawn Books in Marylebone. So we are back outside, arguably one of my favourite bookstores in London. This is Dawn Books, number 84, Marylebone High Street, and it is beautiful. The inside is honestly absolutely stunning, and they always have new recommendations in the window as well, so it's always nice to have a look in regularly because they change up the displays, so we're going to have a look in there. As soon as you step through the mahogany doors of Dawn Books, you feel like you're transported back in time to like an Edwardian, Georgian style era. The you know, the split level mezzanine is stunning. Everything is laid out so beautifully. Again, the staff are so friendly and there's a real mix of books in here. The travel sections are fantastic, all sectioned out by parts of the world. I was very drawn to the Italian section, as you know. They've got some really nice little bits dotted around as well. I've picked up some artwork in here that's actually wrapping paper and we framed that before. There's some beautiful, beautiful books and I can spend hours in this store. It does get quite busy, so do bear that in mind, especially if you visit a weekend. And I was loving the interior books. A few caught my eye, so I'm gonna keep an eye out for those. This one was wonderful. It's called the Duval Kitchen. It's a great one all about the artistry and craftsmanship of kitchen making, and I loved it. They also had a great food section as well, and I've spotted some new cookbooks to add to my list. Some no books were purchased and I'm feeling good. I feel like we have so many that I still need to get through. I'm keeping an eye out for more like coffee table books as well, ones that you can like flick through, as opposed to just like fiction. So yeah, anyway, we're heading now towards Charing Cross. But on the way, I'm gonna try and see if I can find some um, shoes for Wimbledon. So I'm gonna pop into um, Hackett and fingers crossed I'll have some. I honestly love Marylebone High Street. I think it's one of the most stunning parts of London. It just feels so calm and quaint and it really is. A very lovely spot. Very expensive, but very lovely. <laughs> And here we are, we're outside Foils. This is on Charing Cross Road, and this is a huge bookstore. It goes over like four floors. It is ginormous, and um, yeah, it's a really, really interesting store. So let's head on in. This isn't the only Foils, there are a few around London, but um, yeah, this is a very special one. So let's head on in. Now, Foils spans over five floors. This bookstore is 
huge. It rivals Waterstones in Piccadilly, but I just love the vibe of this place. It feels really open, really bright, and somewhere that you want to come, grab a book and just sit and relax. The crime fiction section was on point. This is so my style of reading, and there were so many books that I was tempted to get. Everything is really laid out perfectly. Again, staff on every level, so you can ask them any questions. And right at the top on the fifth floor, they actually have a coffee shop as well. I was drawn to the food section as always, and there was a massive amount of cookery books as well as food fiction and it was just a really lovely store to visit i will definitely be coming back to grab a coffee and just have a little browse look at the directory like you could spend hours in this store what a day oh my goodness honestly every year i say it, the humidity the dense heat of london right now it's it's like nothing honestly i know places are hotter but we have no aircon on public transport and it's just dense city heat a lovely day and i really hope you guys have enjoyed having a look around some london bookshops that i love i have bought some books surprise surprise and um, i'm ravenous as well lunch was really good but i think because i ate like five and a half hours ago kind of peckish and i've walked so many steps i've walked today 19 and a half thousand steps so and I went to the gym this morning. I'm frazzled. Anyway, um, I picked up this book in um, foil. So this is called Red Sauce Brown Sauce by Felicity Clark. I have looked at this one previously and I did look on World of Books for this. It was listed as nine pounds and this was 9.99, brand new. Um, it's essentially devoted to the Great British Breakfast. So um, if you come to England and you ever get a breakfast, um, in you know England, Ireland, Scotland or Wales traditionally you would be offered red or brown sauce and it's all about um, the whole of um, <laughs> breakfast culture here in England so traditionally you'd obviously have um, red sauce with sausages and brown sauce with bacon or vice versa and what you have for breakfast porridge, toast um, a bible for breakfast lovers it was described as and I think I don't just love a food book as you know Oh, I'm gonna have to delay it, guys. This shirt needs to come off. So I was actually just gonna leave with this one, and then I went back down to the ground floor and saw that they had um, two tables full of buy one get one half price. So I got these two. First one is called Do No Harm by Jack Jordan, um, and it's described as My child has been taken, and I've been given a choice: kill a patient on the operating table or lose my son forever. I just thought this sounded so gripping and um, all of the reviews are brilliant so um, and that was signed by the author as well and then this one sounds brilliant so this is storm blind by natalie H natalie hears um and it's essentially a uh, retake on the medusa story so like ancient greek mythology and um, i read one quite similar to this it was called where the surface breaks and it was a dark twisted tale on the little mermaid so this sounds really good. It's described as witty, gripping, and ruthless Sunday time bestseller. So those were buy one get one half price. So I got the two. Obviously we go to Italy very soon. And yes, I have a lot of books already, <laughs> but I really want to get this one finished. It's getting so good. I was reading this on the train before we go because it's quite big in comparison to these ones. So I'm, it'll take up less space in my cabin bag. Oh. Right, do you know what? I'm fancying some pasta for dinner, I need carbs. So I'm gonna do like a, a not a hot pasta salad, a cold pasta salad. Oh, what a day, what a day. I'm gonna make a drink as well, I'm treating myself. It's a Thursday, it's basically the weekend. Right, let's get some pasta on and then um, let's make a drink. While my pasta cooks, I thought I'd show you the loafers that I went for in Jones. Now I've bought shoes from Jones for years. I think their quality is fantastic. And I was looking for a monk strap in this kind of like chocolate brown color. I think that'll work really nicely with my suit. However, I found these in store and I thought, do you know what? They're really lovely. And they were, as I said, slightly more expensive. However, even with the sole, like the quality is just so good. I'd rather invest in a shoe and wear it for as long as I physically can and you can get these resold opposed to spending I don't know, like a third of the price and then having to repurchase them in a couple of years time I think if you invest in quality it looks after you especially when it comes to footwear so yeah I'm very very happy with those and I can't wait to wear them to Wimbledon I'm making a well-earned drink <laughs> I'm gonna do a Negroni Spagliato which 
kind of rose to popularity mm. last year. I think there was a interview with um, someone famous. I think she might have been in Game of Thrones or something. Um, and someone said, what's your drink of choice? And the Negroni. Spagliato with Prosecco in it. Um, but obviously, if you're Italian, you'll know that these are very common in Italy. And they're delicious. So it's essentially a Negroni would be gin, Campari, and um, vermouth. Whereas a Negroni Spagliato is Campari. It's especially, you can do Campari with gin and Prosecco, but I'm going to do more like Campari Spritz, which is like an Aperol Spritz. So it's Campari, Prosecco. Woo! This was left over from when we had Aperols a couple of weeks ago. It's still got some fizz. And then a splash of soda. There we are. And then I'm just going to give that a little stir. My bar spoon that is telescopic. How cool is that? There we are. It's like nectar from the gods. Mmm. So good. Right, let's get starting with, well, pasta's cooked. I'm currently frying up some veggie bacon lard. I'm going to do like a pasta salad -y thing, so I'm just going to crisp them off in the pan. Let's have a look in the fridge and see what else we're working with. This is a very much haphazard, whatever we've got going on. Let's have a look. I've got a remainder of some baby jam lettuce and some tomatoes, that'll do. Um, some more salad leaves, maybe. Uh, let's have a look. Cucumber, lovely. Okay, so in the bowl, I've got chopped up two types of uh, lettuce, I've got baby jam and then just regular lettuce, cucumber, regular tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, red onion, salt, pepper, olive oil, and the crispy vegan bacon lardons. Now I'm gonna add some mayonnaise, some red pesto, and the pasta, and stir it all together, and it's done. That is my dinner served. I just grated over some nice little, well, large actually, flakes of um, parmigiano reggiano. This is actually what we brought back from Venice. So yeah, delicious. And there's loads left over, so I'm gonna box that up for lunch tomorrow. Right, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up. I'm just gonna eat my pasta salad on the balcony, read some more of my book, and probably get a very early night because it's 10 to eight. Where's the day gone? I really hope, oh, it's just started to rain. Oh, I don't think I've ever been so happy to see rain in my life. That will clear the air. I felt like it was getting cooler. But I'm going to sit out on the balcony in the rain. <laughs> it's sheltered, so I'll be fine. I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog. I have absolutely loved taking you around the bookstores. Thank you so much as well to Sky for sponsoring this video. Everything featured in the vlog will be linked down below. As always, lots of love to you all. Take care, and I'll catch you all very soon in a future video. Bye for now.